Thanks to Wix for keeping Legal Eagle in the air and our website on the web. <laughs> I don't believe it. You're meant to come down here and defend me against these characters, and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> I take offense at that. Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a lawyer. Welcome back to Laws Broken, where an attorney destroys your favorite childhood movies by showing you how illegal everything is. Because everything is illegal. Hold on to your butts. This week we're going to examine Jurassic Park. As Ian Malcolm would say, it's like Disneyland if the Pirates of the Caribbean ate all the tourists. There will be negligence. Be sure to subscribe and comment in the form of an objection, which I will either sustain or overrule. And stick around until the end of the video where I give a verdict for John Hammond's civil liabilities and how long Dennis Nedry would go to jail. <laughs> we spared no expense. Spared no expense. Spared no expense. The bottom line is that expenses were spared. <laughs> Let's examine the evidence. Okay, starting off with a bang here. I am pretty confident that OSHA regulations do not permit you to have a loaded shotgun, uh, as well as dozens of men surrounded with cattle prods. That seems like a very dangerous working condition that probably violates a, a number of health and safety codes. This is clearly an unsafe working environment that is going to lead to numerous on-the-job accidents and injuries. Of course, at least they are wearing hard hats, which would make sense if this were a construction site, but this is more like a zoo, so I think those particular hard hats, in addition to not making sense in this context, probably make things more dangerous given that they're not going to do anything to protect themselves from the velociraptors. So their head's in the right spot, but they have no idea what they're doing, and they are certainly not OSHA compliant. Okay, pushing, team, move in there. Move it. But at least unlike Willy Wonka, at least they were smart enough to put OSHA compliant handrails on their buildings. And push! Well up! Loading team, step away! So in addition to shotguns and tasers, uh, a lot of these men are armed with automatic M16s. I kind of doubt there are any zoos in the world that equip their zookeepers with cattle prods and automatic weapons. That seems counterproductive. Raise the gate. So that seems like a terribly designed system. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at this carnage. Okay, so there are a lot of problems here. First of all, whoever designed this system did a terrible job because uh, simply by the raptor sort of running out of the cage was able to push everything back and grab one of these poor workers. I think there is a clear products liability problem with whoever designed this entrapment system. Uh, and on top of it, uh, the person that put this park together, I think uh, has some major negligence issues, which will be a running theme throughout this video. This thing easily could have been designed in such a way to prevent the cage from moving back away from the wall and keeping all of these individuals safe. Uh, just make it all automated and use mechanics and hydraulics instead of requiring a human to open and close this cage and stand on top of it. This kind of foreseeable injury uh, is exactly what negligence is made to protect against, and this is a bad system. 750. On delivery, 50,000 more for each viable embryo. That's 1.5 million if you get all 15 species off the island. Oh, I'll get them all. Remember, viable embryos, they're no use to us if they don't survive. Oh, how am I supposed to transport them? <laughs> Bottom screws open. It's great. Oh, you got It's cool to compartmentalize inside. Oh, you got so that's great. Customs can even check it if they want to. Let me see. Go on. Oh. There's enough coolant inside for 36 hours. No menthol? The, em the embryos have to be back here in San Jose by then. And that's up to your guy on the boat. 
7 o'clock tomorrow night on the East Dock. Make sure he gets it right. All right, what we have here is a civil and criminal conspiracy between these two individuals to engage in a number of different crimes and business torts. What uh, Dodgson and Nedry are doing here is they are conspiring to steal the trade secrets of Hammond and Ingen, uh, which constitutes the criminal act of theft. Uh, and it also constitutes the civil wrong of conversion. Conversion is the civil version of theft. So they're trying to steal these dinosaur embryos from Jurassic Park. Now, given that Dodgson is paying Nedry millions of dollars to engage in this theft and this conspiracy, we can reasonably say that the value of the things that Nedry is stealing are worth at least as much as he's getting paid. So millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. Given the dollar amounts at issue, this theft gets enhanced into the felony of grand larceny, which carries with it uh, easily five to 20 years in jail, depending on the circumstances. On top of that, they are uh, engaging the civil conspiracy to steal trade secrets, which carries with it a hefty civil fine along with it. So that is just the beginning of the crimes that both of those guys are gonna be on the hook for. I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're, that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done, and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well... I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So Malcolm raises a really interesting point. The dinosaurs in this park are not naturally occurring animals like you would find in a zoo. These are essentially products that they created. When you put a product, whether it is a car uh, or a pharmaceutical drug, into the stream of commerce, you are often responsible for the damages that occur as a result of that particular use. And at Jurassic Park, the products are the dinosaurs. They have packaged it into a theme park-like environment, but if a drug needs to carry with it a warning that there are side effects, you can imagine what kind of warnings would be necessary for a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, or any of the other dinosaurs on this, this island. <laughs> I don't believe it. You're meant to come down here and defend me against these characters, and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> I take offense at that. National Weather Service is tracking a tropical storm about 75 miles west of us. Ay, 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 why didn't I build an Orlando? I'll keep an eye on it. Maybe it'll swing south like the last one. So a tropical storm is going to hit Jurassic Park. This can actually cut in two different ways here. On the one hand, if you build a theme park off the coast of Costa Rica, you should expect to uh, deal with hurricanes every once in a while. On the other hand, there is a concept in the law called force majeure, which is basically an act of God, which is so unforeseeable that no one can really be held responsible so you might argue that this particular hurricane might be so severe and so unusual that there's no way Hammond could have planned for it and that he's not responsible for the things that go wrong as a result of this particular tropical storm or hurricane. So uh, those are the two ways that it could go. I, I'm not sure which way it comes out in this particular case. We'll see. Oh, uh, I uh, finished debugging the phones. Uh... Uh, you know, I was gonna do, uh, so I did. I, I, you know, told me that, so I, I did bug the phones. And uh, I thought maybe uh, I should tell you that the uh, system is gonna be uh, compiling for uh, 18 to 20 minutes. So some of the minor systems, they might go on and off for a while, but it's nothing to worry about. It's just a simple thing. All right, so Nedry has engaged in probably what constitutes a number of different uh, computer and hacking crimes. He has clearly exceeded his authorization regarding the Jurassic Park computer network. He is using it for his own nefarious purposes. And not only that, but he's endangering the lives of everyone on this tour. Uh, but because he has exceeded his uh, authorization for the network, he's essentially trespassing 
to all of the different computers uh, and the locks and electronic systems on Jurassic Park. He's also engaged in computer fraud, basically, by using a computer for fraudulent purposes. On top of that, the hacking itself is part of his scheme to steal uh, the trade secrets and the uh, biological embryos from Jurassic Park. So it's part of this larger conspiracy to uh, commit grand larceny. So now would probably be a good time to tell you about the felony murder rule, because I think it's going to be relevant in this particular context. The felony murder rule states that if you commit an inherently dangerous felony, and during the course of that felony, someone is killed, you are on the hook for first degree murder, which is the worst kind of murder that the law recognizes. It's essentially the premeditated killing. It's like an assassination. You intended to kill the particular victim. The felony murder rule is an exception to the general rule that to commit first degree murder, you have to have that mens rea, that intentionality of killing that person. And often that is how you get the death penalty in states that still have the death penalty. So if I was a prosecutor and I was trying to prosecute Nedry to the maximum extent possible, I would argue that theft, in this particular case, grand larceny and conspiracy to commit grand larceny, are one of the things that qualify as being inherently dangerous, and Nedry might be on the hook for the first degree murder of the people that die during the course of his attempted theft. I feel like this is an accurate portrayal of attorneys. Now where does he think he's going? When you gotta go, you gotta go. So the T-Rex has broken out of its paddock because the electricity went down and the fence is no longer electrified. To me, this situation screams negligence. Negligence is one of the first things you learn about in law school. To prove negligence, you have to show a, a duty between one person and another. You have to have a breach of that duty. You have to have a causation between the breach of that duty and the damages suffered. Uh, and you have to have actual damages. Uh, duty is important because uh, strangers don't owe each other anything. If the, the classic example is, if you saw someone drowning in a pool, you don't have an affirmative obligation to help that person. You probably should, but legally speaking, you generally don't have a requirement to do so unless there is some obligation to affirmatively act. That's what a duty is. And when you create a theme park, you have a duty to your tourists, the, the people that are in that park. Whether you have breached your duty depends on whether you have upheld the standards of someone else in your position. In other words, what would a reasonable proprietor of a theme park do? Did the damages, the, the harm that someone incurred, uh, did that result from the foreseeable results of someone's actions? So looking at it in this particular context, we have a Tyrannosaurus Rex in a paddock. They have taken precautions to make sure that the T-Rex doesn't get out. They have put an electrified fence uh, containing this T-Rex. And when that fence is electrified, the T-Rex doesn't get out. It knows that it's going to get shocked and the shocks are enough to keep it inside. However, uh, can we expect things to go wrong? Is it foreseeable that the fence might not be electrified at all times? I would say yes, 100%. So, what should you do as the proprietor of a dinosaur theme park? Well, you should take precautions to make sure that if the electricity goes down, the T-Rex still can't get out. What that means in practice is maybe a second fence, one that is able to withstand the might of the T-Rex. It seems like the T-Rex here was able to put its mass in or use its, its tiny you know, arm claws to be able to snap the steel cables here, which means that they could have used a, a fence with 
stronger steel cables. Separately, maybe you have a backup generator that goes into effect immediately when the first line of electricity goes down. That's a different way that you can solve this problem. A third way to prevent this problem would be to not use a fence at all. I've been to many zoos that have very large animals like elephants and giraffes, where those animals are far below where the tourists are. So the, uh, the change in elevation is big enough that there's no way for the animal to get to the high ground where all the people are. So the natural barriers, uh, the difference in elevation is enough to keep the animals from attacking uh, the tourists and the, the sightseers. So those are three different ways that the designers of Jurassic Park could have designed this particular enclosure to keep the tourists safe. And there's really no question that this negligence resulted in the injuries that these people are going to suffer, the emotional distress and the physical injuries that they're going to suffer are a direct result of the T-Rex getting out. So there's a direct causal link, uh, what's called proximate cause under the law between the negligence in question and their injuries. So this is a slam dunk case, I think, against Jurassic Park for pure negligence bordering on recklessness uh, for these, these poor people in these cars. <laughs> Oh, nice boy. Nice boy. So we have the situation where we have a really bad actor who is going to suffer some physical injuries, spoiler alert, uh, as a result of his own bad acts, but also partially as a result of some of the negligence of the park owners. So in this particular situation, it's possible that if he were able to sue as a result of his injuries and not being eaten alive by a dinosaur, he might be able to get some recovery. Yes, he was partially responsible, but in most jurisdictions, they use what's called comparative fault, which means that if you are at fault for uh, a certain bad thing happening to you and someone else is also responsible for that thing, well, you just look at the various percentages and you say, okay, well, if it was a 50-50 split, then you're entitled to recover 50% of the actual damages. That is in contrast to what states used to use, which is called contributory negligence, which is that if you're responsible for even 1% of your own damages, you're not entitled to receive anything. There are pros and cons with both situations, but uh, equity generally is in favor of comparative negligence instead. So Nedry might be able to file suit. However, on the other hand, there is a doctrine called unclean hands, which says that you're not able to profit from your own bad acts. And Nedry's acts are so bad in this case, I think he would probably be precluded from recovering anything. So Nedry passes away as a result of his own bad acts. But interestingly, because he entered into a conspiracy, conceivably the other members of this conspiracy might be responsible for Nedry's death, both civilly and uh, criminally as well. Now, just as it is foreseeable that the electricity is going to go down on these electrified fences, it's also foreseeable that a human might be able to touch these fences as well. So not only do you need the electric fence to keep the dinosaurs in, but you also have to have a way to keep the humans 
uh, away from this electrified fence as well. Yet another reason why these electrified fences were just a bad, bad idea in the first place. The question is, is it foreseeable that a human would ever touch these fences? Well, as we saw from earlier in this movie, it was incredibly easy for the characters to leave the cars when they wanted to. One precaution you could take is to uh, make it so that no one can leave the cars uh, as they're taking the tour. That might open up a whole bunch of other problems, but at least it would prevent people from touching the fence here. In this particular iteration, we see that it's very easy for people to leave and there is nothing preventing these people from touching these electrified fences. So uh, it, I think it is incredibly foreseeable that someone, uh, some person might accidentally touch the electrified fence uh, and be shocked in the same way that Tim was here. Okay, I suppose this is a minor thing in the context of an island full of dinosaurs killing people, but those fossils probably weigh thousands and thousands of pounds. I don't think that they should be buckling under the additional weight of a couple of people, and the fact that they're falling apart is yet more evidence of negligence by the park owners here. <laughs> So given the height that those two characters fell from, I think we can safely add a, a sprained ankle and perhaps a, a broken foot to the pain and suffering and medical bills that Jurassic Park is responsible for. That is one big pile of shit. All right, welcome to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Let's tally up the crimes. Here, the main bad actor is Nedry. He engaged in multiple criminal acts. Uh, first, he attempted to uh, steal uh, trade secrets from the company. Given the value of the larceny, I would peg his sentence at 20 years. On top of that, during the commission of this felony that was inherently dangerous, three people died, including Muldoon, Arnold, and the lawyer. People are dying. Given the felony murder rule, Nedry would be guilty of uh, three counts of first degree murder, the worst kind of murder. And he would certainly be sent to jail for the rest of his life, if not put on death row, effectively serving three back-to-back -back life sentences. <music> Regarding John Hammond as the owner of Jurassic Park, I don't think he would be criminally liable. They clearly didn't intend for any of this to happen, so they lacked the mens rea for most criminal acts. But that being said, their gross negligence is clearly apparent. Skimping out on dinosaur-proof fences and not creating a backup system for when those fences were no longer electrified is clearly an act of negligence, and they are responsible for the civil damages that occurred. Included in that are probably the wrongful deaths of the three people that died, which include Muldoon, uh, Arnold, and the lawyer as well. Not to mention uh, the OSHA violations at the beginning of the movie, which led to the poor park worker being eaten alive by a raptor. So that's four counts of wrongful death. How much a jury would award would depend largely on their lifetime earning capacity, but let's conservatively say $5 million per person. On top of that, there is the pain and suffering and medical bills for all of the other people that went to the park under false pretenses. So let's peg that at about a uh, million dollars per person. So add it all together, that is $25 million that Jurassic Park owes to the surviving members of the excursion and the family members of those that didn't quite make it all the way through Jurassic Park. After careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. Duh! Now, if you're going to start a dinosaur theme park that may or may not kill all of its patrons, you're going to need a website to advertise it. When I needed a website for helping law school students, which for the record contains no dinosaurs, I chose Wix. Wix helped me create an e-commerce store and a law school blog. I've used them for years and have paid them with my own money because I actually like the websites that I created. I looked at other website builders, but they were all too constricting. The, the templates were fine, but I couldn't change them how I wanted to. Wix allowed me to build an awesome professional website that let me be as creative as I wanted. And the click and drag interface is so easy, even a Velociraptor could do it. 
push. Come on. If you're looking to build your own website, you have to check out Wix. The first 100 Legal Eagles will get 10% off. Just click the link below and use the code Legal Eagle at checkout. So get out there, make a website for a non-murdery version of Jurassic Park with Wix. And until next time, I'll see you in court.